Hey guys, it's Austin. I'm going to walk through Proverbs chapter 29 with you today. Uh, actually, I'm not going to walk through every verse, but more specifically focus on, on one verse here, and that is verse 18. And I'm going to be reading it in the English Standard Version. Just a verse that has really meant a lot to me. It really pops out at me, um, and I'm just going to give you a few thoughts on it. And uh, I'm just going to start reading here in verse 18. And it says, Where there is no prophetic vision... The people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. And some verses actually say where there is no vision, the people perish. Um, so we see a lot of emphasis being placed on the presence of vision in our lives. And I think that's so important because when we see God's promise, um, when we catch a glimpse of his plan for our lives, you know, it's, it's so inspiring. And all too often we get caught up in doing and we don't look around and take the time to see what God is revealing to us. Um, in the second half of this verse, uh, where it says, Blessed is he who keeps the law, I just thought it was very interesting that the idea of keeping the law and, and the idea of the prophetic, prophetic vision uh, were so closely correlated here. And the first thing that it made me think of was what Jesus says in John 13, verse 34, where he gives us a new command, a new law, and that is to love each other the way that he's first loved us. Um, and he even goes on to say that people will recognize us because of the way that we love each other. And so, you know, God's vision for our lives may look slightly different, you know, between me and you, but ultimately we're all called to the same vision of, of loving each other like Jesus loved us. Um, and that's, that's his promise to us. His vision for our lives is, is to become more like him. And so... This whole this whole idea of, of vision and and just got me thinking about you know how how oftentimes we just we try and do so much and uh, it made me think about Sabbath and how it was intended to kind of energize us in a way um, that we we're so we've got our heads so stuck in doing um, all week and that he gives us this chance to kind of just sit back and take a look at what it is that we've been working towards. And so, um, not all of us may have the luxury of, of spending an entire day doing that, but I would challenge you to, to work towards that. Um, but this week, I'd just like to challenge you to take a few, a few moments out of your day and to, and to just take it as your Sabbath time, um, and just to see what God is revealing to you. Because I'm telling you, it's so refreshing to just sit back and not have to feel like you have to do um, anything um, for God to work in your life and you don't have to earn it and that God God's vision for you is for you to become more and more like him um, you know I just hear Josh talking all the time about the process of sanctification how how each day that we um, our hearts become more aligned uh, with his heart as we seek um, to become more like him um, and that, and that's what that's what God wants for your life. Ultimately, God wants you um, to become more like Him, to become closer to Him, and to love His children. Um, so that's all I've got for you. Um, please try and take a few moments at some point, um, and just sit still. Uh, I promise you won't regret that. And don't forget to read the rest of this chapter. It's it's full of some gold. Um, there's some really great stuff in here. So that's all I got for you. Thanks thanks for listening. And I'll see you soon.